Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Crochet Happy I Am, I'm Nicole. So on this channel, I show you how I make my resin work, I do my crochet work, and any painting that I may do. Uh, I also just recently purchased the Cricut Joy, so I'm going to start throwing some projects for that in here soon. I also do requests, I get orders for different um, items that I've made that people want to purchase. So currently right now, if you notice, I'm on my patio because my work desk <laughs> has a couple projects that are orders that I'm working on. So a little difficult to move things around. So and it's a nice day. So why not be outside? So if you hear people walking around outside, like that guy. <laughs> I also do videos where if you message me and ask me to show something specific, I am more than willing to do that. And that's why for today's video, I am going to be focusing on how to do the single crochet stitch. I was just recently informed that my niece Shelby, who is 13, is learning how to crochet and she wants to learn the single stitch and so my sister asked if I could teach her so that's what today's video is going to be about but first we gotta get some baseball information in there so last weekend we went to spring training and unfortunately it was a total bust we spent a whole one day we got out there Wednesday night went to bed woke up the next morning there were no player cars in the players parking lot instead around on the other side where they play the minor league players they were all parked over there and everything was tied off so we literally watched one day of batting practice over the fence in the outfield so the players were about that big we did get to watch a few of them thankfully we've got a really good camera and got some good pictures afterwards we hung out on the side of the street where they exit the whole area and a few players waved we got a hello wave from Otani but after that there was there was nothing we couldn't even go into the, the team store there was just nothing so we left on Thursday and we decided, okay, we've got all this free time. We're going to make the best of it. So Thursday, left Arizona, ended up in Joshua Tree, drove around, checked out Joshua Tree's little town, uh, got dinner, uh, found a camp spot and hung out. We camped out. Thursday night into Friday morning in Joshua. Friday morning, we got up, drove around, enjoyed the sights, took a lot of pictures. It is beautiful. Um, went to a little breakfast place. Delicious. Oh, it was good. I had the corned beef hash. Yummy. And then on our way home, we stopped at Cabazon and checked out the dinosaur exhibit. I will tell you, I love how that place is catered to all ages. You would think it's, oh, kids only can do this stuff. No, they let even the adults go to town. It's so much fun. It's about an hour to two hours of entertainment. They do have a picnic area, so if you want to take your kids and picnic, knock yourself out. And then we ended up coming home. So at least we were able to do something. So now I'm just waiting for the regular baseball season to start. So on that note, let's get to crocheting. So for today, I'm just going to do a swatch. I'm not gonna make a project. I'm literally just going to do a swatch. We're gonna start with a slip stitch, then we're gonna chain, and then I'll show you how to single crochet across your chain and back. And we're just gonna make a little square swatch. So I'm gonna use this yarn. It's a medium four weight 
and the way you tell is if you read the paper there's going to be an image and it says the medium four and that's how you know the size the next box over will be whether or not you're crocheting or you're knitting and that will tell you what size hook or knitting needles to use we are doing crochet so i'm going to go according to this and according to this it says to use a 6.5 millimeter hook which is that one right there and it will say on your hook somewhere the size of your hook it'll be pressed in it's kind of hard to read on camera i know but and i think i had it upside down so let me try that again but it's a fairly good size hook which is good because then you'll be able to see each of your stitches to starting this don't start small it's going to be hard to see where each of your stitch is going to be I'm also using a easy color that's light and you'll be able to see the stitches. Sorry, leaf just fell. <laughs> Holy shit. Well, creepy. Okay. Edit. So the lighter color makes it so it's easier to see where your next stitch is going to go. That's why I chose this one. So let's go ahead. I'm going to change up the angle and we'll get started so that way you can see what I'm doing. I'll make sure to go slow enough and I will explain each move as I go along and I will try my best to use the terminology and explain to you what that means if need be so that way you can also learn the terms. So let's get started. Okay, so let me start with the simple basic. Every skein of yarn, there's going to be two ends. There's going to be an end that comes out from the center of your yarn. And then the other end, it's going to look like it, but it's just tucked and it's going to be working on the outside of your skein. For me personally, I like the one that comes out of the center because then your skein's just sitting there and it's not flipping around like a fish. So try to find the center. Some skeins, the paper that's around it will come with a little map showing which end is which. Unfortunately, this one doesn't have it. So I just had to find it myself, which I did. So there's that. Also a good thing to have is a tool kit that comes with your hooks of multiple sizes, a pair of scissors, ruler, and all your smaller needed tools. And here's my stitch counters and all that stuff. Okay, so let's get started. And so we're gonna start with the slip knot. I'll do it a couple times. So you're gonna start with your end and you're gonna hold your thumb to keep it in place. You're gonna bring your yarn around the back of your hand and you're gonna make a little hoop like so. So now you've got this X. Then you're gonna go into that hoop. You're gonna grab the yarn, bring it around, and then you're gonna grab this tail and your working yarn, and you're gonna pull forward. And it'll slide. Then pull on your working yarn. Let's say you don't like this tail or whatever. You can always take it apart and start over. So I'm gonna do it again, just so you can see. The way to do it, bink, just pull those two ends again loop around your fingers make an X go into the hole, the loop grab your yarn pull it through and pull together feed your hook pull your working end like so terminology this is called the tail because it's gonna look like a tail this is your working yarn this is it's called the working yarn because that's the yarn you're going to be working into your project pull apart it's that simple so one more time and then we'll start our chain so go around through the hole and pull okay so now that your slip knot is finished 
you're now going to hold your yarn however it's comfortable for you. Some people hold their hand different. Just play with it, figure it out. You'll figure out what's more comfortable for you. I personally hold like that. Um, and Shelby, your grandmother, she used to wrap it around her pinky and around her finger. They don't know if she still does it, but that's how she did it when I was a kid. I do that sometimes, but that's only when I'm working with a bigger yarn and I'm making it really loose. It gives me more control of how much yarn I'm using. So I just naturally just hold between my two fingers over my pointer finger and that's my... I tighten here when I need tension. So to chain, you're going to take your hook, you're going to grab your yarn, you're going to bring it around and that's called yarning over and you're going to pull through that hook, that loop. Again, yarn over, over your hook, through the loop. Again, yarn over, through the hoop. Yarn over, through the loop. Yarn over, through the loop. Yarn over, through the loop. Let's go ahead and we'll make a swatch of, say, 20 stitches across. So currently I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Now When you go to make something, you always have to chain one at the end of your row because you need what's called a turning chain. So we have our 20 and we want it to stay 20. So I'm going to add one more. So I'm chaining to 21. I like to work the back side because I just like that braid look and it doesn't matter. There's no rule in crochet saying you have to do up here or on the back or the whole X. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want to do, however you want your project to look. Crochet is very freedom. It's great. Plus on the back, it's easier to see these lines. And each one of those is your stitch. So because you want to keep your project at 20, you're going to skip this first one and you're gonna go into the second one. Just like that. And you're gonna yarn over and you're gonna pull that through. Now at this point, you have two loops on your hook. You're gonna yarn over again and you're gonna go through both of those loops. That is a single crochet. So let's do that again. Go through your stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both. Now, what I'm doing here is I like to bend my yarn into this little hump thing because it pushes that stitch up where I can find it. So if you want to do that, just kind of wiggle it, it'll come up and then that way you can do your stitch and you can see where it is and you can do your single crochet. So, stitching on the chain is really hard but you just have to take your time be patient with it try and try and try until you finally get it down don't get frustrated just keep trying so through that stitch yarn over 
pull through, yarn over, pull through the two. There's your stitch, go through it, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through the two. Into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through the two. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just finish off this row with you watching. Sorry about the airplane, if you guys can hear it. Once again, I am outside. And I know you can also probably hear the water. We have a nice little pond in front of our apartment that has a water fountain in the center. No, it is not raining. And she just. And now I have another airplane. Okay, last two. Now, if this was done correctly, we will have 20 stitches. And the way to check that is all these little V's is a stitch. So you want to count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, five, 20. I did it right. So I have 20 stitches. So if you've got 20 stitches, you did it right. That's great. Let's move on. Next step, you have to, like I told you before, you have to chain one, that extra stitch, and it's your turning chain. So it's the same as when you did your chain. You're just going to yarn over and pull through the loop. That's it. Yarn over, pull through the loop. Then you're going to turn your work. I like to turn my work counterclockwise. Now from here, your stitch is that hole. And that's where you're going to put your hook into this hole, which is right underneath that V. Yarn over, pull it through. Yarn over, pull through two. Again, there's that hole mixed with the V. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to keep doing this so you can watch. Always make sure you catch both those hoops because uh, I didn't. I had to go back and do it again. So.
So again, we're at that last stitch. It's gonna look funny, but you just gotta wiggle your hook in there, find that V, and pull it through. And then again, of course, you have to do your turning chain. So you chain one, and then turn your work. So now we've just finished. You did your chain, you did row one and row two. And this is what your work should look like. So just keep going. So you'll get a nice squared look to it. If you want to go ahead and make a project using this stitch, we'll start with something simple. Go ahead and make a pot holder. You're going to do this same technique that I'm showing you, this, this single crochet back and forth to make a square. What you're going to do is you're not going to chain 21, you're going to chain 26 because then that way your project is 25 stitches wide so it would be you know about to here and then you're going to do I believe it's 50 rows because then once you've done that like let's say this is the whole project it's going to be a long rectangle because then once you're done you're going to fold it in half so you'll have this thick double-sided square and that is how you make your pot holder because then what you're going to do is let's say this is the pot holder right so we're just playing along if this was my pot holder and i'm finished you're going to stitch the three other sides together by combining. So you're going to go into that first stitch on the front, but then you're also going to find it on the back. And you're going to do what's called a slip stitch. So you're going to go into both of those, yarn over, pull through, but you're not going to yarn over again. You're just going to pull through the first loop, and that's a slip stitch. I'll do it one more time. through the two, yarn over, pull it through, pull it through that first loop. Into that, into that one, grab your yarn, yarn over, pull it through, then go through that original hoop, and there's that. And that's a slip stitch and see it pulls it sews it together it gives you a nice clean seam line and it won't be bulky on the out on the outside edge
Okay. So I'm at the end. I'm going to stitch. I'm going to slip stitch. Now the way to end it is you're going to tie off by with that you're going to just chain one like normal but this time you're actually going to cut your yarn and you're going to pull that all the way through like that so it's cut and then you're just going to pull on it and it's going to knot it's going to make a nice tight little knot and you won't be able to get it off that's why i'm not actually cutting my yarn because you know but you just pull it and then pull on that and it'll make a nice little tight knot and that's how you close it off. Let's see. Makes a nice So that is how you single crochet and do the slip stitch and chain. So go ahead and try making the pot holder if you have any questions please feel free to <coughs> comment in the comments below and I will do my best to help explain how to do it okay so now that I've shown you and gone over how to do it this is what the pot holders look like I have two of them together as a set uh, but when it's done you should be able to pull it apart that way it's two layers and you won't burn your hands but this one I didn't do the slip stitch on the edge I wanted the, the extra bulk and design so I actually just did basic single crochet across the edge instead of a slip stitch which you can do that too if you want if you want the the edge but if you don't want it to have an edge then do the slip stitch. Totally up to you. So, um, go ahead and have fun. Make pot holder. See how you like it. Don't get frustrated. Just if the count's off or whatever, all you have to do is just pull it apart. It literally, you just take your hook out and just pull your work will come apart that easy and then that loop that's sticking out that's just where your hook goes it's really simple can't you there's really no way to have to go I messed up throw this piece away start over just take it apart find your mistake fix it because a lot of times, especially with your stitches being as big as this is, it's really easy to think that you're in the next stitch, but you're repeating the same stitch. So you can put two in one. Some patterns want you to put two in one. But for this, you're just one stitch per stitch. You're just one, one on top of the other. So if for whatever reason you go you do the pot holder and it's supposed to be at 25 and you count 26 that means somewhere in that row you added another stitch just pull it apart do it again one row not hard so i have confidence you can do this simple project pick a fun yarn and make sure to pick something that is at least a th what's called a three medium or higher I don't advise going into the chunkies for this project. Try to just stick into three, four, maybe a five medium weight. Um, like I said, again, just look at your yarn, find that little image and use that. Okay. So go for it. Crochet the single crochet stitch. I'm going to say thank you for watching. Please don't forget to click on that little red subscribe button right there. That helps me out a lot. Let's everybody else know that you are enjoying my videos and watching and learning. Also, if you have any questions on terminology, the stitch itself, 
or if you want to see me show a different stitch in a swatch and teach you again comments down below and I'll be more than happy to show you what I know so again don't forget to subscribe click on that like button lets me know that you guys learned something from this video so have a great day and we will see you guys on the next video. Bye.